All right, folks, welcome once again to the Maximum Performance Webinar Series. My name is Eric Janesco. I'm head coach and CEO here at Maximum Acceleration, the professional's coaching company. And we originally started this series uh, back in October of 2012 to create a community of people who are really dedicated to perfecting and refining their skill and ability to grow on a rapid scale. And uh, we've enjoyed now several hundred episodes uh, through the course of the program, uh, and we're always looking for new ideas and content, by the way, so feel free to chime in and give feedback or comment as to what else you'd like to get more information about. Today's special program is, is something kind of near and dear to my heart and a lot of opportunity, so I've asked a uh, true uh, you know, marketing expert and guru, somebody who's a very dynamic presenter with a, an extensive history working both with the Tony Robbins organization and, and hundreds of mortgage companies and realtor organizations across the United States for many, many years, uh, a very eloquent and, and efficient speaker at communicating great ideas and simple concepts that are easy to turn around and implement. Uh, so uh, our guest speaker today is Mr. Jeff Zimfer, uh, Chief Content Guy for the Mortgage Marketing Institute. And obviously the program he's going to be sharing with us today is all about how to get the attention of millennials and speak millennial language uh, in the context of growing your mortgage and real estate practice. So Jeff, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us today. And without further ado, I'm going to hand off to you and let you take it and run, all right? All right. Thank you very much. Wow, for that intro. Hopefully I live up to that. Uh, I, I, I uh, always like to classify, you know, to use those terms of mortgage marketing expert or marketing expert guru. Um, I, I'm just a guy who studies a lot and, you know, learns a lot and then likes to share. Um, so that's kind of my take on who I am. And you, know, you mentioned Chief Content Guy at Mortgage Marketing Institute. I wanted to take a second, first of all, to welcome everybody. Um, and let's get right into it. You probably are asking you know, a little bit further about you know, who is Jeff Zimfer? Why should I listen to him? So I want to let you know, first of all, out of the gate that I'm one of you. Um, I've been in the mortgage trenches, became a loan officer actually back in 2003, um, starting at Countrywide Home Loans. And you can see here, this is kind of my career path um, as a mortgage loan officer. Um, some of you, I'm just curious if anybody uh, uh, has or is familiar with my book, as I show, I'm showing the book there on the screen, Instant Referrals for Mortgage Professionals. Um, I'm not trying to you know, pimp the book or sell it, but I know sometimes there's people who are familiar with the book. Um, it is available on Amazon if you want to get it. But anyway, you know, you know, that's that's my claim to fame is uh, you know struggled like a lot of loan officers do in how to really grow your business and build a referral business. And so, uh, long and short of it is, uh, once I discovered you know uh, more efficient ways for capturing uh, real estate agents, building a fence around them, which was you know building a content platform and adding value and teaching agent classes, I was able to take my mortgage production volume up to 37 million in just two years and starting from nothing. So, but uh, I'm just curious if anybody's got my book, a yes or no in the questions. And Eric, if you can maybe help me out as I'm doing the interaction part of this, that would be great. A couple of no's, a couple of yeses, yeah. Okay, great. Um, anyway, so uh, Eric, you alluded to Mortgage Marketing Institute. That is um, my latest uh, baby, if you will. It is a labor of love, and uh, you can always um, learn more and check me out over there at Mortgage Marketing Institute. I host a weekly podcast there, Mortgage Marketing Radio, of uh, different top producers and subject matter experts and so forth. And Eric, we're going to have you on in one of the upcoming episodes as well. Uh, because you are doing some great, phenomenal things in terms of coaching and really helping right loan officers get clear, get focused, and get a plan in place to succeed in their local market. So, you know, uh, hats off and virtual applause to you for, you know, what you've done for all these years in the mortgage space. All right. So, without further ado, let's get into it. We're here to talk about really my agenda is is, is twofold. One is I want to talk to you uh, about millennials <clears throat> and share some facts and stats with you. Um, you know, the marketing do's and don'ts and, uh, you know, how do you approach millennials? What can we expect from them? Maybe quell some of the rumors that exist out there. Are they a market we should, we should consider pursuing or not? And then lastly, I want to talk about growing your purchase business and um, actually talk a little bit about how you can leverage what you learned today um, to capture more real estate agents by helping them understand how to more effectively capture millennials. So, as you know, our uh, focus is how to, you know, uh, a crash course in capturing millennial home buyers, how to engage and profit from the most influential consumers in history. And I'll share some, some facts with you right now that will hopefully convince you that indeed they are. 
So I think it starts with the first question is, who are millennials? You know, there's a lot of, there's, uh, they're also, also referred to as Gen Y out there, but let's take a closer look. So millennials, right? Where do they fall on this graph here? You know, most of us has heard, have heard of and are familiar with, right, baby boomers as being the, the largest segment of the population and growth and economic power and so forth. And for a long time they were, right? As you can see here on the screen, if you look at baby boomers, born anywhere between 1946 and 64, um, you know, largest segment of the population. A lot of those baby boomers obviously are, you know, into retirement years and so forth. Then we've got, you know, next is the Gen Xers. That's a category I fall into, so a little bit less influential, if you will, the baby boomers than the baby boomers. But now you look at the millennials, right? So look at the difference, I mean, you know, in terms of just the, the population, um, the sheer size of that. And right now it's 83 million people, right? And it is a powerful force to be reckoned with because if you look at some statistics that, and this is, comes from the National Association of Realtors, by the way, here's the current stats right now for millennials. Average age is 27. Now what's interesting is the average age of a realtor is 57. And we'll talk about some of those differences there. The median income for a millennial is 73,000, right? So depending where you're at in the country, not too bad. 97% um, of the millennials that are buying a home finance the home purchase. So that's good news for us, obviously, the mortgage lending business. And of course, the bulk of them, 76% of them, are first-time home buyers, considering how young they are. Um, and they're going to comprise the largest segment of the workforce um, by 2025. So it's this, if you can imagine, it's this huge, just ever-expanding balloon, right, of this, this um, segment of the population that's growing in not only age and maturity, but it's growing in their uh, career status and their income and their life status as they begin to uh, get married or not, have families, want to settle down and actually have a home. And so this is why people talk a lot about the millennials and why it's, uh, you know, uh, could be considered a, a large part of focus for you um, if you're interested in working with home buyer, first time home buyers. Because I don't care where you are in the country, if you're working with first time home buyers, um, obviously millennials are going to make up a portion of that, a significant portion. And so there's some ins and outs and there's some things to, to be aware of when you're perhaps structuring uh, and adjusting your business plan to attract and capture millennials. It's where the money is, quite honestly, in the market moving moving forward, right? If you look at this this chart right here, right? If you look at the, um, it's on by 2018, their projected income will surpass the baby boomers. So as a whole, right, those 75 million baby boomers, their income is going to equal over $3 trillion. So while, depending on where they're at right now in their age range, right, in terms of are they, are they on the the low end of the millennial or the higher end, a little bit older, right? The incomes are going to vary a little bit, and we'll talk about how to identify and target those. So I, I hopefully I've made it clear that it's a powerful force. It's a it's a really um, you know large growing segment of the population that we need to be aware of. And the other thing to be aware of is that um, as you may have heard, right? They're born in a dig digital world. Right? And so what's interesting is every generation has its own unique traits and so forth. And But for millennials, what that means is, right, you think about it, they've grown up in this always-on world, always connected. Right? And so they are totally comfortable um, using and relying and leaning on technology for communication and so forth. So let's talk about how that defines how we as mortgage professionals um, should engage with them. Right? Let's talk about phone calls. A lot of people would, would lead you to believe that, oh, you know, millennials don't get on the phone and all they want to do is text. Well, that's not necessarily true, okay? <laughs> First of all, you got to keep in mind that millennials, while they are in a group or a category as, uh, you know, consumers in the United States, obviously they're still individual uh, individuality when it comes to millennials, right? Some people may um, actually want to be on the phone call and prefer that, and especially when you're talking about a home transaction, right? So. Um, uh, phone calls can be just as meaningful as in-person get-togethers, meaning um, a phone call is the next best thing to being there, perhaps, right? Whereas with millennials, they might be much more mobile, they might not need to depend on in-person as much, while well, a phone call can replace that in-person connection. Um, retweets or likes, right? So this is obviously for those millennials that are on um, Twitter, for example, right? They can be uh, more relevant than email. What does that mean? Well, it simply means that um, millennials are using lots of different social channels and email may or may not be the predominant one, 
right? And so this comes down to when you're actually talking with a millennial, asking them what their preferred method of communication is, right? So as we go through this transaction together, Mr. and Mrs., you know, first time home buyer, right? What's your preferred method of communication for status updates, loan updates, when I have requests about documents, et cetera? Um, do you want to receive a text? Do you want a phone call? Uh, do you want an email? Right? You want to understand that because their answer may surprise you, and they actually may give you several different channels. Right? Obviously, they're big on texting. Right? With the frequency of texting that goes on, um, if you're not comfortable with texting, I would ask them. Right? What again? What their preferred method is, and then make sure you comply with that because texting for them is essentially equal to that of a phone call. And it's funny when you look at uh, you know the growth of emoticons and emojis. Um, I, you know, it's really interesting the the amount of emotional weight that they or an impact that they put to an emoji. Like you send somebody a smiley face or a thumbs up. Hey, your loan's approved. Thumbs up emoji, right? That's is that's for them. That actually has physical interaction in their body. They actually feel that as being the same thing as a real thumbs up or a real smiley face. So it's very interesting when you get into the psychology of it. And then the last point here on the slide that's kind of amazing is that um, over half of them would give up their sense of smell instead of their social networks. That's pretty pretty strong. Give up your sense of smell instead of Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. Um, that just tells you how engaged they are, right, and how we need to understand that. And again, I think the big takeaway from these points are, or is, um, what is your preferred method of communication as we, you know, continue through this home buying, home approval process, right, and understand that and make sure you use their preferred method of com communication as the dominant one. Does this make sense? Any any quick questions here? I just want to pull the audience real quick. Okay. And we can come back to questions, by the way, if they, if you do see a, a relevant one piling in there, uh, Eric. So, so in You're keeping welcome. with this this theme of being hyper connected and hyper social, just some interesting you know background knowledge for you, right? Um, here's this is very relevant. Almost seventy percent of the millennials won't make a major decision without running it by their network first. So, what does that mean? Who? What is their network? Right, it's family and friends. Right, it's family and friends. I mean, considering where they are in their in their you know life path, right? And a lot of these millennials are still you know 25 to 35 ish, if you will. Um, they're obviously still going to a talk about it amongst their friends, and b they're going to talk about it amongst their family. So oftentimes it makes sense for you to engage with the you know in in this case in their family members if they are if the family members are helping them with the transaction in terms of a gift you know funds towards down payment or whatnot you may want to encourage a group call um, a group you know virtual meeting over Skype or you know hey if they want to come in the office come in the office but just be aware of that and you may even want to ask them right during kind of your in, in uh, interview process when you're taking your 1003 right hey who else is going to be involved here right in helping you uh, become a first-time home buyer. Who are you looking to for guidance or whatnot? I think this goes to the bigger point of you understand when you're talking to somebody and, and, and you know influencing them that there's usually um, several individuals behind them as well that may be um, uh, you know not part of the primary conversation. Um, that uh, they're also you know kind of vetting out who you are as a professional. Other family and friends probably checking you out online. So what is your what does your presence look like online? What kind of professional presence do you have? Do you have a professional looking website blog? Do you have content right that they and their family and friends can digest? And because understand that they are they are sizing you up. Whether you got this as from a referral from a real estate agent or you got it cold. Whatever the case is, even with referrals, people still go online and check you out, right? And the last bullet you see there's online reviews. For them, online reviews is actually very strong, right? So they actually um, put a fair amount of weight into online reviews, whether that's Yelp or whether that's other online, um, you know, review tools that you use out there. Um, it's uh, you know, it's seen by them as a third-party credibility instead of. Right, what they don't buy into so much today is, is us saying how good we are. Right, top producer, whatever, president's club. I mean, who, all, who cares? Right, what are, what are the clients that have engaged with you in the past? What do they have to say about you? And that's really what you want to start to consider in your marketing is on your website and so forth. Right, how do you integrate either online reviews or start to leverage um, you know third-party uh, custom you know client testimonials, success stories, and and we'll get into it a little bit later, but one easy idea for that is I'm sure either you currently do this as a mortgage professional or you've seen others start to use video, 
right? Whether it's even even just photos, right? Uh, at a successful uh, closing, right? Hey, we just closed on you know um, Joe and and Sally Smith home loan, right? And there's a photo with everybody, right, holding up the the contract or the keys to the house, and everybody's happy and in arms. And that's one great way for you to use social proof and to and to repurpose that photo, that video, if you will, um, across social media and with your online reviews. All right, so it's interesting. Um, even with the challenges we've got in the economy, right, the unemployment issues that the millennials face, the massive amounts of student debt that they do have, um, they still are very optimistic overall. Right? They believe that the future is so bright they got to wear shades, and that they, they believe that the country's best years are ahead of us. So that's really awesome when you think about that in the context of a potential home buyer, right? That means that if you know they're more optimistic about the future, if someone's more optimistic about their financial future, about the future of the country as a whole, right? Are they more likely to make that big decision of purchasing a home? Yes, and this is another reason aside from the, you know, financial uh, impact from the, you know, the sheer spending power that millennials will have, right? This is another reason why it's, you know, important to consider them um, among your marketing mix. Okay, so let's talk about another point where it's very important, and this is that millennials are socially conscious. What does that mean? Well, here's a great example of what that means. All of you, how many of you here are familiar with Tom's Shoes, right? Go ahead, chime in, yes. Uh, Tom's Shoes, right? With every pair you purchase, of shoes from Tom's, Tom's will give away a new pair of shoes for a child in need, right? It's the, what they call their one-for-one one program. And they've since expanded from that, and they now have one pair of Tom's glasses, right, um, where they'll actually uh, donate proceeds to go for sight-saving surgery or medical treatment for somebody to help with their eyes. And the impact to Tom's you know, brand and that company has been phenomenal, right, in terms of the growth and the rapid success that it's had. It's just resonated. I mean, when you think of Tom's shoes, I mean, I'm assuming in general you've got a positive association to that brand, I'm going to guess. And the, a large reason for that is because of the social good that they've attached to their brand. Okay, it's it's basically it's doing good by you know doing well by doing good for others. So you may be looking at that and saying, well, that's great, Jeff. I don't have a pair of shoes or you know to give away or eye surgery to help for somebody. But there are things you can do to associate your brand to causes for good. Some people do Habitat for Humanity. Some people right talk about for every closed transaction, we're going to donate you know X amount of. Um, proceeds uh, towards you know the local charity like in my area here in Orange County there's like the Orangewood Foundation which is you know our foster homes and things like that or if you haven't heard of this organization um, I actually interviewed the uh, CEO and founder of Give Back Homes for every home they sell an agent sells or a loan officer is associated with a portion of those proceeds from that transaction will go towards building a home for a family in need so if you want to find out more about Give Back Homes, I, I interviewed Blake uh, on the podcast. You can go to Mortgage Marketing Institute podcast, check out the podcast there, or you can just go to givebackhomes.com. But it's a phenomenal um, platform for you to team up with a real estate agent on and, and, and you know, attach your brand to a cause for good. And I can tell you just a quick story, uh, just uh, uh, an example of, uh, there's so many examples, one of a loan officer, one of a real estate agent. I know when I was talking to Blake, there was a loan officer uh, in Manhattan Beach, California, who was able to secure a meeting with a mega producing agent simply because of her affiliation with Give Back Homes. And because, I mean, you think about the Tom's example, right? Who doesn't want to do business with somebody who's you know, associated to a, a good cause? As a matter of fact, um, I don't have a research slide here, but um, when consumers were interviewed, assuming all things were equal for doing business, meaning quality of experience, right, and so forth, quality of, of the product and service, assuming all that was equal, 98% of consumers would switch a brand to work with one who's attached to a cause. So essentially everybody wants to associate with a brand, with a business or a company who's doing good in the world, particularly millennials, okay? 
And I have to tell you the story of the, the real estate agent of Give Back Homes, um, uh, Manhattan Beach, California. Maybe you're familiar with it. It's a very competitive area. It's high-end homes. Most of the homes are a million dollars plus. Um, each community. So if you can picture all that, and so there's this um, the Give Back Homes, the first realtor client that Give Back Homes had, right, was competing against all these other top producers who had been in Manhattan Beach area for 12, 15, 20 years and really couldn't get any traction. As a matter of fact, that was the genesis of the start of Give Back Homes. Um, was uh, the founder of Give Back Homes used to work at Tom's Shoes in their, their giving division and was so emotionally moved by a giving campaign that they were on in Nicaragua, he saw the home when he donated this pair of shoes to this little girl. He, he said, you know, she took the shoes and she ran back to her house and she was so excited with these new pair of shoes and he took a look at the house she was living in and it literally was this steel shack of this corrugated steel that was stacked up in the middle of, you know, nowhere and it was terrible living conditions with a dirt floor and you know no plumbing and no ventilation or anything. So that was his inspiration and really sparked an idea in his head to say, hey, we did this at Tom's Shoes and it worked so well. How could we do this in the real estate space? And so his first realtor, who actually was selling him his home, um, basically they brainstormed this idea and this realtor now within just a three, less than three years has become, I think, the number five or the number seven real estate agent in the entire Manhattan Beach community amongst thousands of agents and had literally um, leapfrogged all the other agents. And when people see him in town, they're like, hey, you're that give back homes guy, right? Everybody knows him as that. So this is the power of what you can do when you get your, your brand associated to something of a cause for good. It doesn't have to be give back homes, it could be something else, like I said, but the important thing is do it. Cool thing about Give Back Homes is they've got some built-out platforms for you to be able to team up with your agents, for you to use in your marketing with their logo and so forth. Um, and it's just a powerful, powerful tool. So get associated to a positive cause. Okay. And as I uh, kind of alluded to at the outset, as uh, remember, all millennials are not the same. Let's talk about it, right? Let's they're in they're, they're categorized into different segments, and we'll make it simple and put them into two different groups here, right? Two distinct groups. On the left hand side, you see the younger millennials, right? Those are just growing into adulthood. They call them the explorers, the right? They're looking for new experiences, and so these are typically 18 to 24 year olds. And you can see here's the stage they are in life, right? They're graduating college, they're just beginning to date, and they're like, hey. I want to travel the world, right, live life, probably at that stage not your ideal customer for, for getting a, a home loan, right? What we want to focus on is the older millennials, right, the people we call the aspirers, right? These are people who have now, right, graduated from high school, they've gone through the dating thing, they're probably setting da settling down, getting engaged, and they're now focused in on their, their, their desired path to finding success. Right? So what does that mean? That means probably getting married, right? really getting kind of entrenched in their career, and uh, now they're starting to look at and consider buying their first house and, of course, starting a family. So they're probably largely first-time home buyers coming out of a renter situation and so forth. Right? So let's dive a little bit deeper. Who are these aspirers, right? Well, they're ambitious, right? They want to achieve success. They actually, you know, are into success, and they have certain um, identifiers of what does success mean to them, right? What are the status symbols of success, right? They want to, they want to get ahead, right? And they want to, you know, um, they're they're not the uh, the antisocial. I just want to live in my parents' basement thing that you may have heard, right? Their key, their core need in life at this stage of the game is achievement. Right? And you think about it when you were, you know, maybe we've got some uh, aspirers on the call right now, 25 to 34-ish years old. I'm sure one of your core desires is to achieve, else you wouldn't be in the mortgage business, right? It's, it's not easy to succeed in the mortgage business. It's hard work, and you're here because you're partially money motivated as well, okay? And you want a certain level of achievement. One of the status symbols of achievement is actually owning a home. I remember, you know, when I bought my first home. I was actually, uh, you know, a little beyond the millennial stage, but for me, and for most people, it's a significant, it's, you know, symbol of achievement. And what is Zillow, right? They've got some interesting data about this when you talk about um, millennials. If you look at that, the green bar, right, um, age 35 to 49, some really interesting stats there. Um, let me see if I can use my mouse here. <laughs> Hopefully it's working. 
Um, if the green bar in the, uh, well, let's just take it one by one here, right? On the far left here, right? 39% of people aged 35 to 49 said owning a home is necessary to be a respected member of society. Okay, cool. How about 1834? Whoa, even more. 46% of 18 to 34-year-olds say to be a respected member of society, I got to own a home. Okay, next graph bar there, right? 65%, these are millennials, owning a home is necessary to live the good life and the American dream. Move one more further, right, where you see that blue bar there, 74% owning a home provides a person more freedom. And then lastly, 65% say owning a home is the best long-term investment. Well, that's pretty positive data from interviewing millennials. That's pretty, you know, contrary to some of the negative press you see about millennials, like I said, you know, living in their basement or whatnot. I'm not saying there's not those percentage of millennials that are living in their parents' basement or back at home because of unemployment, because of, you know, student debt. You know, that definitely exists. But by and large, you look at the sheer size of these, of this first-time homebuyer market, 75 million in overall positive, bullish on home ownership. And it doesn't stop there. All right, here's the 2015 NAR preview of home buyers and sellers, right? What percentage of the home buyers in 2015 were millennials? I'm sorry, in 2014, right? 32%. And this is a growing number. As you can see, it's trending up. Okay? How about what's the future look like over the next five years? Well, as I said earlier, you can see the top figure there, 79% expect their financial situation to improve over the next five years, and that 74% plan to move within the next five years. Why do they want to move? Well, 71% want to find a better home or apartment, so they want to trade up. Maybe they want to get out of their apartment and finally buy that home. Maybe they're in that little tiny starter condo and they just had a baby and they need a bigger place, right? And you can see the reasons, right? I mean, 50% say to establish and own a household and then um, essentially 48%, call it 50, right? Because they want to own and not rent. So it just keeps getting better in terms of the story here, right? Because, I mean, um, this is the projection from the Urban and Land Institute where they're, they're projecting in the next five years over 8 million new millennial households will be formed, over 8 million over the next five years. So I guess the question is, what percentage of that do you want, right? So hopefully we're establishing the, the, you know, the trends that are looking positive here for the millennial market. So if you've been on the fence about, hey, you know, millennials, what are they really worth? Should I really devote and direct my attention to just my marketing and my messaging and my, my, uh, my uh, you know, process, my sales process, my loan engagement process, right? The external and the internal process. Well, if you're believing all this data, one would argue that, yeah, you should prepare yourself for the, for the growth of the millennials. How do they buy? Okay, so how do millennials come to us as a mortgage professional? Where do we get those leads? Well, uh, as you would expect, right, the first place they look, as in most pe other people look, uh, uh, for buying, a, uh, uh, you know, getting information about the home buying process is online. Okay, this is from the 2015 NAR profile of home buyers and sellers. So this is actual stats of people who bought a home that are millennials in 2015 of where did they start? What was the process they actually went through for buying a home? So my question to you is, as a mortgage loan officer, what's your online presence like? If they're going online to find information about a home buying process, do you provide information online for them to be able to get educated, to engage with you, right? On your website, if you have a blog, social media, sharing relevant information, content marketing. I'm sure you've heard that phrase by now, right? How about financing the home? Let's get down to it. Are they getting all the money from their parents and it's just a total cash buyer? No, right? Look at this figure here. Basically 100% of them, right? Uh, I'm sorry, basically 30% of them finance 95 to, to almost 100% of the house, right? If you look at all the figures, they're 80 to 89 percent, 22 percent, right? Everybody's financing the house, typically with less than 20 percent down. Now, here's what's interesting, though. Most of the market is misinformed still about what it takes to buy a house. Most people, this is just a Fannie Freddie study I saw the other day, Fannie Freddie comes out and says that the bulk of the market still believes you have to have 20 percent down and perfect credit. Not true. What's the value of the takeaway for you here? Educate provide information and content that helps the market understand there are other options for home buying that you can get in with less than 20% down, with less than perfect credit. Boomerang buyers, right? 
the timelines on when you can buy after a foreclosure bankruptcy short sale. See, the thing we need to start changing for ourselves uh, as a mortgage professional now moving now more than ever is we need to move away from being more transactional to more relational, right? And engaging and nurturing and, 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 and taking people through a dialogue or a conversation, particularly first time home buyers, both online and off, right? Because people, especially millennials, they're hungry for information. And if they're not gonna get it from you, you don't want them to get it from one of those big other brands, right? Who claim to have a rocket to get a mortgage in eight minutes, right? <laughs> You want to be that lighthouse in the industry where people can come and get authentic information. Okay, let's talk about parents, right? And this is relevant in the conversation of, my gosh, millennials got all this millennial uh, student loan debt and all that kind of stuff. So there may be some of the millennials that are bouncing back home for a little bit, right? But here's what's cool is to know that they're going to get help, right? More parents of millennials plan to help their children buy a home. This comes from Loan Depot, right? 50% of the survey said they're going to get help from their parents for the down payment, right? 20% are going to co-sign. 20% are going to help with closing costs. So this is all relevant in understanding who you're really selling to when you first engage a first-time home buyer. You're not only selling to them, right? You're selling to their friends, their network their family members who are likely going to assist with a down payment. And so you want to bring that out to the surface as soon as possible, right, during your, your, your 1003. You know, obviously you're finding out what, what their assets are in terms of what they have in the bank or whatnot, but, you know, jump in and ask them those questions right out of the gate. Hey, are you, you know, looking at any other sources for your down payment or closing costs, such as, you know, parents, you know, family, friends, relatives, whatever, right? Understand and know that up front. And in some cases, it might be relevant to actually engage those family members during a conversation at some point during your process. Because what the heck, they're going to get 50% of the down payment, right? Or whatever the case is, help from for the down payment. You want to engage with those you know, other influencers involved in that transaction. Does this make sense? I'm going to pause and just check the audience. Eric, let's see if everybody's tracking and it makes sense. Yes? And if so, we'll come Definitely. Up. Okay, cool. Yeah, so right, definitely so some uh, important value in, in what you've already shared. Um, a lot of comments and questions about it. I, I don't know if you want to take those now or if you want to hold off for just a second, but uh, I think you might cover several of them in the next section, I think. Yeah, so let me cover marketing do's and don'ts, and then we'll take a pause and see what questions uh, that are relevant, okay? Awesome. So some big takeaways. for question, guys. Yeah, so some big takeaways here. Number one, stop selling. Okay, stop the great rates, great service. You know, I know it's relevant to talk about you can close in eight minutes when it's when it's appropriate. Okay, that's relevant at some point during the conversation, but not up front. Right? They don't want to be sold to. People don't want to be sold to. They like to buy. Right? But again, start looking at yourself. You know, I love the quote from Dave Dave Ramsey. Right? You know, have the heart of a teacher, not the heart of a salesperson. Okay, heart of a teacher is what resonates with millennials because they're new on this journey. They're looking for a trusted advisor. Okay, Amy Choro, she's the VP of Platform Development at Better Homes and Gardens. She says it very well, right? Make sure your website is a source of solid information. This is particularly for millennials. Don't rush a meeting or hit them with a sales or marketing pitch. Simply provide relevant information about the process and develop trust. I don't have to tell you guys, you've heard it said hundreds of times. People buy from people they know, like, and what? Trust. Trust. Exactly. How do you build trust? Well, over time, by prov providing value, by demonstrating yourself as a an authentic person who cares, as a as a as a subject matter authority. Okay. So let's talk about how you provide helpful information. Seventy-four percent of millennials said the biggest benefit they got from an agent was helping them understand the, in large letters, process. Making, you know, marketing that makes hard to understand concepts easy. You make hard to understand concepts easy. Well, how do you digest hard to understand concepts? When you're on social media, right? You ever look at an infographic? You ever read an ebook? You ever watch a video? You ever watch a brief slide deck that's maybe three minutes? Again, it all comes back to this idea of content that educates the consumer and it's easily shareable in what we call snackable bites, right? So we're not going to run an hour-long video. We're not going to invite them to a 45-minute webinar. Well, there are some really cool things you can do with a seven-minute automated webinar, actually, 
um, through my friend Tom Ward at Path to Buy. But think about the various ways you could structure content like infographics, ebooks, etc., that make it easy for people to digest and understand the home buying process. How about this for an idea? How about a downloadable beginner's guide for new home buyers, explaining the process from start to finish? Right? Here's an example of um, something that some of our realtor and loan officer clients, right? The ultimate guide to buying a home. Obviously, this is from last year, 2015. We've since up updated it. How to find your dream home at your dream price. How about using video? If you look at uh, some of the research on YouTube, um, what do what is consumed most for the for the real estate type videos? The largest, most most consumed videos are are, are uh, community related videos, all about the community. What is it like to live here? Right. Next is about new listings, and then um, over half of them is informative. Right. The home buying process, etc. Thirty percent, pretty significant. It's testimonials. Remember, I talked earlier about testimonial videos. I am telling you one thing that would be an amazing impact for your business if you got over the fear of being on video and just understand that, you know, grab a, your, your phone, have an assistant do it or whatever at the closing table, start going to your closings actually, I know, unique concept, uh, <laughs> and start, start interviewing your clients and just say, hey, would you mind just taking two minutes, what was it like to work with the, you know, the uh, you know the Adams team at ABC Home Loans. Turn on record. Oh my gosh! Just want to thank you know Jim. He's such a great loan officer. He helped us through a difficult process and really just you know was amazing. Always always responsive and attentive and you know really made this whole thing easy. And I'm um, just so glad that we are able to get in our new home. Done. Okay. It's funny. The least amount of watch videos about you know real estate. Twenty five percent. Oh, all about you. All about the agent. Right. Why? Eh, I mean, people care to a degree, right? Want to understand, you know, are you, are you successful? Are you knowledgeable? Are you going to negotiate, you know, on my behalf? Can I trust you? All that. But these, these are all ways to bring people through the sales funnel and engage, right? And start that dialogue, start that online conversation. So let's talk about blogging, right? Um, I don't know if we've got any bloggers here. Chime in and let me know, yes or no. If you do have bloggers and if you... <laughs> Feel free to let me know if uh, we do have some bloggers there, Eric. But um, the whole key with this is, you know, you got to be consistent, provide quality content, and it's got to look professional. Um, there's a number of resources out there for blogging. One of my good friends, Michael Erdman, founder of My Smart Blog, check that out if you haven't. Um, does some really cool automated syndicated great blogging. System. Yeah, you just say great system. Yeah, I mean, guys, it, it's one of the easiest ways to get a healthy amount of content that does the education stuff that Jeff's talking about, uh, and and it's, it, I mean, it pays for itself. I mean, it's ridiculously inexpensive compared to uh, the time that you'd have to invest in in actually building a, a you know a healthy blog page all by yourself. You really ought to yourself to check it out. Uh, MySmartBlog.com. I'll post that in the in the the Q and A chat here in just a minute. Um, but uh, anyway, keep going, bud. Little shout out for Michael. <laughs> anyway, the whole point of this, right, it goes back to what I said earlier, and you saw the stats, right? Where are where are people uh, starting in their home buying process? You know it's online, right? So if you're not online, you don't exist. Bottom line, you're not part of the conversation. And even if you do get that referral, like I said earlier, from a real estate agent, you know where are they going to go? They're going to check you out online before they call you. They're going to. So give them a good experience online. And you'll have less selling hurdles to jump through, less competing on rates and fees and all that kind of stuff because you'll have established yourself right as a relevant professional. So in summary, how do we connect and engage millennials? Well, obviously, get tech friendly, right? If you're, if you're not tech friendly, you need to get tech friendly in the ways of right what type of mediums do they like to communicate on on social media and texting and so forth and you know um, having a friendly user experience for them I said earlier start stop selling start helping provide relevant content that educates get access to content that's going to help educate these home buyers build credibility with reviews and customer stories I just talked about that align your brand with social causes and most importantly, be you, right? Be authentic. That's what resonates most with people. It's just being you. Forget, you know, it doesn't have to be all about I got to sell and close. That is a natural outcome of a transference of value. So we're about 40 minutes or so into this right now. Now let's take a pause, Eric, and um, at first ask this question: Was this valuable? And let's just take a few questions, okay? 
All right. Well, and while people are chiming in, a couple of the ones that came in earlier, and this you did answer a few of them in the marketing component, but uh, um, it, one of the questions that came through earlier, you were mentioning Twitter and how important and how much value the Juan Ailes place on Twitter content and the ability to retweet content. Uh, to me, as a you know middle-aged guy, Gen X, or uh, you know, maybe a little old-fashioned in some respect. I'd never really found much use for Twitter personally. It's like, how do you say anything relevant in 140 characters? But mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend to leverage Twitter from an education or marketing perspective? What kind of tweets mm -hmm. connect well sure. with millennials, particularly early in the buying process? Yeah, so I mean, in essence, you want to think of Twitter as Twitter's a news feed. It's a live news feed, so you know, obviously you're limited to the 143 characters there. Uh, um, so anything that is, you know, these, these tweetable, snackable, um, you know, chunks of info, whether it's market updates, um, whether it's some home buying trend information, um, things like that, uh, or things that drive people back to your website, you know, such as, you know, um, uh, the ultimate guide to buying a home to first-time buyers, you know, buying a home, right? Click here. And it's a link back to your website, to your blog, whatever, for people to grab that 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 guide. Maybe have them opt into an email form or something. Um, but it's real, just kind of you know, short, snackable, largely newsfeed type stuff. So you can repurpose and reshare other content on Twitter for those those um, news outlets that you're following. You know, whether it's Fannie Freddie or all the other news outlets and so forth. So it's a great way to just repurpose other people's content and and do that easily. Um, but then again, it's an also a way for you to continue to build your subject matter expertise because you're then tweeting out, you know, content that's relevant to the home buying process. You know, you tweet out a new video you just did, a new testimonial or something, or you know, whatever it is. So just keep just keep that in mind. And and you know, uh, w that example earlier of, of of tweets and things like that, right? That was really in the context of like shareable, usable content. I think the be better question to ask you know, your millennial when you're engaging them is um, what social channels are you engaged on and, you know, uh, how would you like us to communicate during this home process, the whole, the whole home buying process? You're not going to communicate with people on Twitter about their individual home buying process, obviously, right? Because that's one to many. That's right, right going out to your entire audience. Um, so I don't know, hopefully that starts, starts to answer the question. The other thing I would say is automate, you know, your, your, your social media um, sharing, whether it's using a platform like My Smart Blog or Buffer or something like that. So hopefully that's that was valuable. Um, but another question, Eric? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, the the other question that came through was just it, going a little deeper. You know, uh, peeling back the onion on the uh, uh, type of content. What mm -hmm. types of? I mean, and I know you went into it a little bit with the uh, help them understand the process and the ebook. Uh, but uh, what other kind of things do you find, and, and maybe even reflecting on some of your own experiences, Jeff, or some of your own successes with some of the agents you work with, uh, what do they find seems to catch the most attention? What are the things that, that seem to be gobbled up by the millennials? What type of content or educational material? Yeah, so again, it's everything under the home buying process from start to finish. Right, um, everything from as basic as what you know. For example, um, what should I not do when I, you know, when I'm um, getting approved for a home loan? Because as you know, some people go out and buy a car or whatever. Buy, you know. Um, so it's everything you can imagine about the home. Think about this, right? You got a person who's entering this journey, and by and large, assume they have no idea whatsoever about the home buying process. See, the problem is we're so engaged in our work day to day and day. We take so many of the things for granted. We need to, you know, t t remove ourselves from that situation. And by the way, this is a great question to ask your next first-time home buyer when you're taking a loan out. So tell me, what do you understand about the home lo home loan? You know, sorry, what do you understand about the home buying process? And what are you most concerned about during, you know, as we go through this together? As you saw earlier, right, the most relevant information was about the home buying process, meaning what do I need for a down payment? What does my credit score need to be? Um, you know, how much reserves do I need in the bank? Uh, you know, so on and so forth. How about how long does it take to actually get loan approval underwriting? What about the funding process? You know, you can even do some things, you know, where, where it's like you've got uh, your entire um, operations support team doing a quick intro. You know whether that's a video, whether that's a one pager, where it's you at the top, and hey, here's my loan, my loan process team. Here's my underwriter, my funder, my processor, and so forth, so on and so forth. You want to basically envelop people, put your arms around people, and take them through the entire process and educate the heck out of them, right? 
what what seems um, obvious to us is not so obvious to those on the outside. So I'm trying to give you a big broad brush answer to that because you guys understand the entire home buying process, right? Any elements or parts of that of those all those moving parts about the home buying process can be a piece of content that's shared, right? Uh, three things to never do when you know during your home loan, right? Boom, 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 right? For example, does that make sense? Absolutely. Well, and uh, in the interest of time, we're, we only have a, a handful of minutes left here, Jeff. Uh, one of the main questions is, is, boy, I wish I could share this with realtors. How do I get access to the content? Uh, there's a handful of questions that have come through related to the same issue, up to and including, can we get a copy of the Home Buyer's Guide book uh, that you were talking about? Um, why, don't, why don't you spend a few minutes here, guys? And, and folks, as, as Jeff is kind of, uh, I guess, kind of wrapping up a little bit, coming to a conclusion here in the next couple of minutes, if you want to go ahead and post a few additional questions. Jeff, I know you're a really busy guy and you got a lot of commitments, but maybe we could hang on a little after the hour uh, for any additional questions. Uh, but why don't you go ahead and answer the question about uh, access to content here. Yeah, well, let me take the question of could your agents benefit from learning this? <clears throat> and I'm going to assume that the answer is going to be yes, because you know, you, you think about you, you needing to grow your realtor referral relationships, right? And that's obviously, I think, more important than ever. Um, you know, as we continue to get into a bigger purchase market and so forth, and uh, I will tell you, there's a there's a, a, a shift underfoot underway, where, and you guys have heard this before, so I don't need to beat this drum of becoming more valuable to your real estate agent partners, right? And no longer is it rate sheets and donuts, and you know I close in ten days and all that. Well, closing in day in ten days is cool, and that might be useful. Um, what if your neighbor comes out and says, I can close in seven days? You know what I mean? So the value proposition can't be solely based on service. Um, because that's a minimum bar of entry. So um, what I believe is that the way for you to become most successful with agents is by building a platform of being a teacher, right, of being an educator, of providing value to your local real estate agents. That's what I believe. So I'm going to take the next few minutes real quickly here and just talk about how you could leverage uh, you know, this information. For instance, let me ask you this. Would, you, would anybody want to or be open to teaching the information I just shared with you to your real estate agents? in like a lunch and learn class or something like that where you get 20, 30 agents in a room, you get the slide deck, Holy you know, cow. IT. Yeah, I think everybody on the, on, the, on the chat and everybody who's attending just fired in, absolutely. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, cool. Good to hear. Yeah, a lot um, of interest, guys, so. Nice. So, so what, here's, let, me, let me go through this real quickly because um, like we only have about eight minutes left, so if you can hang with me, please do so. So here's the challenge, right? Um, the, the, the traditional sales model is broken, and I can't tell you how many times I talk to loan officers and, you know, they're still doing the, the old traditional ways of, like, cold calling, door knocking, whatever, begging, chasing, right, all that kind of stuff. I don't have to tell you guys, cold calling, right, it's, it's just not a very efficient leveraged activity. Only 2% of cold calls actually get you an appointment. Um, so not very leveraged activity. So when you think about... Why do most... How many of you hear this uh, on a regular basis when you approach an agent in whatever format? I already have a lender. Uh, all my buyers are cash buyers. I'm a listing agent. Anybody hear that kind of stuff? Yeah, you got to understand the mindset of an agent, right? If if we are approaching an agent and there's no prior relationship, they don't know who we are from Adam. They're gonna say that because they don't know who you are. They don't know you, they can't like you or trust you yet. So what do you sound and look like? You look like every other damn loan officer in the in the your local area that's doing the same thing. So naturally the knee jerk reaction to that is going to be eh, you sound like everybody else. I already have a lender I'm happy with. Great. I mean a lot of times you know what hey maybe that's true and that's fine. But there are ways to, you know, um, circumvent that traditional process. You know my good friend uh, author Seth Godin right talks about in a crowded marketplace fitting in is a failure. Right? Not standing out is the same thing as being invisible. And that is what you are when you sound and look like every other loan officer. You're invisible. <laughs> so nobody can do business with you, right? If you're invisible, besides that, nobody wants to hear the traditional um, approach that we've, we've been you know, hammered for so many years. So this is why I believe you need a platform, right? A platform allows you to do so many different things, and that's why I believe teaching classes is one of the most powerful platforms you can have 
for all that it does. Number one, it educates and informs instead of interrupts and sells, like we talked about earlier. Now you're able to actually position yourself amongst agents as a thought leader, as providing value. But there's so many other things that classes do for you in terms of having the captive audience, attention of that agent for, you know, let's say 40 minutes or an hour. Um, imagine your first meeting when you're prospecting agents is now with 20 or 30 agents instead of one. So that's the top of your funnel. So if partnering with agents is a numbers game, why not get, you know, accelerate that. Why, why not meet with 30 agents at once instead of one? And your first meeting not being all about you and your great rates and service, but being about, hey, let me add value to you. And oh, by the way, if it leads to an engagement and a relationship, great. And you do this on an ongoing, consistent, consistent basis in your local agent community, now you're building this platform. Right? Now you're building this um, brand, this awareness of, oh my gosh, you know, Eric, um, he provides these monthly lunch and learns that just continue to educate me on millennials and all these different things in my business. Oh yeah, that's right. He's a lender. My lender isn't doing that right now. Geez, maybe I should consider working with him. Okay. So the modern referral process, particularly when it comes to agents, is this. No longer is it cold calling and all that kind of stuff, right? It's educate, engage, which leads to warmer calls, which leads to relationship building. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker here and skip some of these slides just in the sake of time. But why teach classes and workshops? Real simple. Number one, it's the power of in-person, right, which accelerates the process of building rapport, building likability and trust. Hey, online's great. I'm a big lover of online. It's a leveraged thing, right? But it's never going to replace in person, particularly when it comes to building referral relationships. Okay? You need to augment your online with offline. So the power of in person allows you to reach top agents who you know are difficult to reach. It allows you to break into closed offices with that in-house lender, right? It allows you to just meet more agents that much faster to be able to reach that goal of how many agents do you need to reach your referral goals. If you need 10 referrals a month, right, how many agents do you need to get to 10 referrals? And how's your current plan working to get there? And the other thing of why, you know, you want to consider teaching classes is what the top producers do. You know, it's funny, when I look at the Scotsman's Guide, top 200 rankings or all the other top rankings, you know, I would say 80% of the top producers on all those lists at one point, if not currently, at one point during their career, used teaching classes to real estate agents for the reasons I already mentioned. For example, um, Shashank Shakar, right, $114 million funded last year, right, big teacher, big class teacher, um, and, and, and continues to offer classes to local real estate agents. I actually interviewed him on the podcast as well. You can check that interview out. Don Peck, top producer with Guild, right, 131 units funded, monthly educational seminars, right, increased her volume 10 million, right, by teaching classes. And the list just goes on and on as my mouse is frozen here. <laughs> Come on, mouse, where are you at? Okay, I see some movement. There we go. Uh, another gentleman, Matthew Posey from Ameripro, hosts Agent Lunch and Learns. What he says was what I said, high tech will never win out over high touch. And the other reason why teaching classes makes sense is because most originators simply wing it. They shoot from the hip, they call up, they go, hey, give me a shot, I'm great, we close in 10 days, whatever the case is, right? I'm obviously kind of cutting it short for the sake of time here, but really what it's about is Agent classes allow you to put in a process or a system that is predictable, allows you to A, capture agents with a captive audience, collect information, right, to understand what are the pains and hurts and needs and wants, but allows you, more importantly, to add value and nurture that relationship because you're not going to close a top producing agent on a one call close. It's just not going to happen, right? You need to build your presence and your value proposition over time so you can rise above the noise. Everybody still with me? Let me check in with the group. Does this make sense? Yep. Okay, cool. So, how many of you here would like to double your agent referrals in the next 60 days? Big show of hands. And if you don't, that's fine too, I understand. Yeah, pretty much everybody. <laughs> I know, it's an obvious question. It's a, right? One of those rhetorical questions. Anyway, so let me real quickly talk to you about um, an, uh, a proposition that I have for you to join us in what is called Powerful Presentations Master Class. It is a program that I've put together uh, after years of doing seminars for loan officers and real estate agents. And here's the sum of it. I'll just give it to you right here. The idea is let's help you get in front of lots of real estate agents fast. 
okay? What you see on the screen here is that's me on the left, the younger guy, not the old guy. Uh, the older guy is the uh, real estate agent, top producer, who I had the good fortune of getting in front of after prospecting for months and months. Um, didn't ever respond to my prospecting, but guess what? Came out to my seminar, and I got a referral from him, from him on the spot that day. And I can't tell you how many times this happens because of the positioning that takes place when you're conducting a, a live class like this. So you can see on the right-hand side, there's a half of the room there of agents, right, attentively listening to um, myself and my guest speaker that day. Um, so what do we present when we're, we're teaching agents? Well, we present content like we shared today. Um, what I pulled out of today's presentation is, by and large, um, one of the done-for-you presentations that you get in Powerful Presentations Master Class. And so I walk you through a video tutorial on how you teach it, what the script is, all the nuts and bolts that go into filling the room and so forth. Here's another example of a done-for-you presentation that you would then teach in a class format to real estate agents, the new rules of real estate marketing. This is all about content marketing, right, and how they can leverage content marketing. And so if you can imagine, what we've got here is an online e-learning platform that allows you to um, not only get the content, but also understand all the different moving parts to filling a room. So what I'm going to do real quick here for a second, Eric, if I can, is exit the show and bring up my web browser and take you guys real quickly to um, what the, the actual um, Powerful Presentations uh, portal looks like. Is that coming through okay on the screen, Eric? I'm gonna make it bigger here. Yeah. Okay, great. So what you can see here real quickly is this is actually the members area of Powerful Presentations. So you can see I've got uh, five video modules and a bunch of bonuses in here. And what this is is an entire, the entire process for everything about hosting classes for agents. One, the planning that goes into it. Two, the tools that you're going to use, right, email, offline, uh, ordering your custom custom seminar flyer and so forth, which we actually do a marketing flyer for you. How to promote your uh, upcoming class, how to get agents butts in the seats, how to team up with your local affiliates like Title Escrow to help defer any potential costs you might have and so forth. Um, actual presenting, right, the actual done for you presentations in here. So these are the actual PowerPoint decks. It's me actually giving the presentation um, to you so you can understand what the talk track is, the scripts that goes with it. You download it all here so that you can use it yourself, right? And then so on and so forth. You guys can see how this all plays out here. I talk about follow-up, how to actually leverage and convert attendees to, to referral partners. I interview other top loan officers on the hot seats. I give you a seminar feedback form which, help, which helps you collect information about what are they dissatisfied about with their current lender, are they open to working with you, download that you guys asked about, that's in there, the ultimate guide to buying home, your first home, so on and so forth, um, a coaching call with me, on and on and on. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in there because it's pretty self-explanatory. So what I'm going to do is I'll get back into the presentation here and bring this back up and I will take a pause and ask, answer you guys questions but bottom line is look you know I've done this a lot it works and that's why people keep coming to me because I am the presentation guy <laughs> in the mortgage business uh, my good friend Travis right I can go on and on with stories here him chasing top producers they never showed up he got 22 agents at, a, at his uh, lunch and learn he closed eight loans from that one event okay here's another client of mine uh, Lauren Acosta up in Reno. She really had no experience doing presentations whatsoever. Um, I helped her get through it and do her first one, and you can see she was able to really get um, jumpstart her success with realtors. Uh, my good friend Jeff, People's Mortgage in Arizona. He's done two presentations, got five new agents, three referrals. I mean, on and on and on. It works. Here's why it works. A, because I teach you how to do it, walk you through the whole system, help you do it. B, because being in front of agents, delivering value, helping them, educating them is more powerful than any, you know, sales script about closing 10 days, great rates, great service could ever be because it's authentic. People want to connect with others that are like-minded and helping them grow their business. That's what's going to get you the attention of a top producing real estate agent. So we're probably at the point, Eric, where they're asking how much. I'm assuming. Exactly. So let's quickly tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, uh, the investment here is $497. Eric and I have teamed up on a number of these, and um, so what we're doing, uh, because I'm looking to get, obviously, um, more clients at this point, uh, we want to make you a special offer. 
Uh, cut that fee in half, only $297 one time, and you get everything you saw in there, right? The entire system, you get the whole planning your presentation, how to get agents' butts in the seats, how to market it, how to team up with your affiliates, um, all the tools and resources, your custom marketing flyer, uh, the done for you presentations, the uh, you know me teaching it, me helping you deliver it, the talk track scripts, how to follow up, most importantly, how to get attendees into appointments. That's where the magic happens. Twenty agents in a room. I show you how to sift and sort and convert those agents into actual one on ones and to uh, qualify them based on uh, you know importance or A, B, and C level agents, if you will plus all the other hot seats, interview scripts, templates, and so forth, and so on. So that's where you can go to get your um, access right now, getpowerfulpresentations.com. I'm going to take the risk out of it, 30-day money-back guarantee. For whatever reason you're not satisfied, you know, watch the videos, download the PowerPoints, listen to the hot seats, have your complimentary coaching call with me, and if in the first 30 days you're not satisfied, you get your money back. Um, this is where you want to go, getpowerfulpresentations.com. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me at that email address. I'll pause and take any questions right now. Eric? All righty. Um, all right, there was one more question that came through, uh, Jeff. And by the way, th those of you who uh, had uh, jumped off a little bit earlier, hopefully you've been able to catch this up. Uh, for those of you who asked questions about whether the PowerPoint from today's program uh, and the um, uh, uh, the the, uh, those the book, who, uh, the ebook. Yeah. The, well, I, you, well, Jeff, I, I think you mentioned the possibility of getting access. Does that does that come with the course, or do you? Is, the ebook. Yeah. Give that to yeah. The ebook comes with the course. See, here's the thing. Um, listen, the, the the deck I walked you through today on the millennials. You know, that is mm -hmm. actual slides from the deck that loan officers that are members of of powerful presentations would be delivering to the real estate agents. So it is pr proprietary um, because I spent uh, about 10 hours building the content of that deck. I can't just give that away blindly. Um, that is exclusively for members of Powerful Presentations. So that's how that works in the ebook as well. Again, uh, those of you on the webinar, though, anybody who's registered for the program, you guys will get a link to a recording of today's program uh, as well. There was another question that came in. Uh, Twelve months from now, the content changes. What happens mm -hmm. then with the Powerful Presentations program? Yeah, good question. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So it includes all updates. So as you saw with the ebook, right, the 2015, we've updated that in the members area to now say 2016. Um, so any, like, uh, you know, edits to content that uh, are in the PowerPoint decks, that would include lifetime updates there as well. Okay. Uh, the other thing that, that will be coming, um, I, I, Jeff, I know you and I had talked about this, and the last time you were on the series, we had actually lost, launched a subscription-based version of this program uh, where new content will be added periodically. Uh, it, there's, you know, that will be coming as well, so watch for further updates, guys, uh, you know, and announcements that we'll be sending out to the audience uh, uh, attending this as well as a regular registered and subscriber list. Uh, here at Maximum Acceleration, obviously, there's a pretty healthy community of folks who uh, that that we uh, that we provide education and value to. And so, to the extent that you're a member of that community, we'll be introducing you to additional updates and changes as they come across. Um, all right, guys, go ahead and post additional questions here. There's one last thing I wanted to kind of update with uh, and and wrap up here for you before we uh, before we adjourn for the day. One last thing that I wanted to. Uh, give you guys the opportunity to take advantage of. Some of you asked the question about what it is we actually do here at Maximum Acceleration, the professional's coaching company. We offer three different levels of service between a, a library of home study course materials designed to be more topic specific, group or on-site coaching programs for a team of loan officers or realtors, and one-on-one -on -one personal coaching, more of the behavior development and the ongoing repetition and reinforcement that it takes to actually transform who you are into what you really want to be changing those habits uh, so that you can become that 200, you know, 300, 400 unit a, a year loan officer. That's what we really focus on. Uh, I'll tell you what though guys, the, the best way we've ever really found to help people understand the true value of coaching is to actually experience it. So we offer what's called a strategy session, which is a no cost, no obligation, one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our coaches, live, real time. We'll address a particular issue or challenge you'll have. Uh, you'll walk away with an action plan and tools and resources to overcome the challenge. And along the way, we'll talk about when or if it makes sense for you to move forward with some coaching. If you'd like to take advantage of one of those strategy sessions, again, there is no cost or obligation. Uh, it, it is just something we feel 
feel is the best way to help you find out and understand the true value of coaching. If you'd like to take advantage of that, you're welcome to go ahead and post that in the Q&A right now, or you can go to the website, mxlcoach.com slash strategy. Uh, M-A-C-C-E-L coach.com slash strategy. Go ahead and, and, and give us the contact information, the name and email address, so our team can get a hold of you to schedule that strategy session. The last thing that I always do with these programs, and again, guys, uh, I know Jeff is going to hang around for just a few more minutes um, to answer any additional questions um, uh, here in just a minute, but um, there's one last thing that I would encourage you all to do, and this is the way we typically close out these programs, but um, You've invested about an hour of your time at this point into the absorbing of this valuable information. And trust me, there's a wealth of ideas here. I've got a list uh, three and a half pages long on my scratch pad of, of things that I want to add to some of the program we're, we're doing in the future. But the, the reality is, is that don't walk away from this having invested the time without actually taking the final step of putting it in action. I mean, let's be honest, knowledge is not power until it's applied until you take action with it. So before you answer that next text or phone message or email, take 30 seconds to put an action plan in place. Um, decide what was the one most valuable thing that you want to implement first. Maybe it's that, uh, that charitable contributions idea and, and linking to a charity in some way, shape, or form to become the philanthropist in your community. Um, whatever it is, that one idea that you want to move forward with first, do that. Uh, it, maybe it is going ahead and subscribing and becoming a member of the Powerful Presentations Masterclass community and being able to get access to the incredibly valuable resources that, trust me, would take hundreds of hours to develop on your own independently if you don't take advantage of what Jeff is offering here. And again, it, if it's not for you, no big deal. Uh, you know, it's just it, it's one way to contribute back to some of the value that Jeff has given you here. But whatever that one idea is, decide what the goal is. Second is create an action plan to implement and take action with that idea. What are the steps in process to get that running in your daily business? Third is put deadlines on those action plans. By when do you want to have the materials acquired? By when do you want to have them downloaded and reviewed? By when do you want to finish the the step by step training process that Jeff provides on the website? Uh, put target dates for those deadlines. Now the last thing, and this is the secret sauce, this is what creates the 95% chance of completion, is share that action plan with somebody and ask them to hold you accountable to completing that action plan, checking on your progress regularly. Um, you know, in 1993, there was a study done by Brigham Young University and basically said if you do these four things, you set a goal, you create an action plan, you put deadlines on the action plan, and you share that with an accountability partner and ask them to hold you accountable, you have a 95% chance of finishing the goal following through and implementing that idea. Uh, you know, and that can be anybody, a colleague, a mentor, a, a boss. Uh, uh, you know, uh, spouses don't typically make very good accountability partners. It's too easy to lie to them. Let's just be honest. Uh, but the, the reality is it's so hard to break the promises we make to somebody else we care and trust and respect. It's so much easier to break the promises we make to ourselves. And often that's the simple difference between getting it done or not. So I want to encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity. I want to encourage you to, to participate and, and pursue going to that level. Um, with that being said, guys, uh, we're going to flip back to the Q&A. And, &A and, and uh, one, one other final reminder here, guys. Uh, Jeff, I'm not seeing the little retreat buttons. If you want to go ahead and, and hop back to the uh, uh, the powerful get powerful presentation slides so folks can uh, remember the website to go back to. Guys, you know, think about the return on investment here that Jeff has offered you with this program. Think about the potential uh, that you have to generate um, a tremendous amount of uh, trust, a tremendous amount of credibility. Uh, to really truly become the advisor to the business partners that you seek to work with and begin to identify, um, becoming an asset and resource to the realtors in your community that goes so far above and beyond the value of closing one deal or not or the timing or, or service issues. I mean, let's be honest, 99 out of 100 loan officers promise great service, 98 out of 99 fail to deliver it. So are you really raising or lowering your credibility when you associate yourself with all the other bozos and robotmortgages.com that screw things up? all the time um, versus really truly being someone who gives massive value first 
and earns the opportunity to become a collaborator and a partner in their success and how much more longevity, loyalty, and value that creates for them and you in a reciprocal relationship. And, and so I can't encourage you enough to take advantage of the offer that Jeff has presented for you here today, guys. Uh, with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and close out the recording. Uh, uh, any final thoughts, Jeff, that you'd like to share with our group just before we wrap up today? No, I would just say, right, uh, for those that are want to go to the next level with the agents, um, you know, I'd love to have you join us as uh, powerful presentations, and I can guarantee you this, uh, you know, double your referral, agent referral partners in the next uh, 60 days, assuming you follow the plan that you and I work out together, and, uh, you know, join the success ranks of the other students and top producers that you, top producers that you see there. So um, hit up get, get Powerful Presentations, send me an email if you need to with questions. Or, um, you know, like I said, I'll be hanging out for a couple more minutes and answering some questions here. So thank you for the opportunity. All right, no problem, guys. Well, and guys, one last time, think about the ROI on that investment, uh, the, 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 the incredibly low value that, that, that Jeff has offered this to you at. Um, I, I, to be honest, I can't believe why he's offering it so inexpensively. I mean, one additional loan is about a six times ROI for most loan officers. I mean, even the lowest paid LOs in the business is still at least a three to four times ROI if you only ever got one loan out of the program. And I can almost guarantee you get dozens more than that. Um, that being said, guys, uh, you know, anything and everything we can do to help you take your business to the next level, that's our only goal here at Maximum Acceleration is helping you get from where you are to where you want to go as fast as humanly possible. So, uh, you know, come to our website, check out our blog, uh, sign up to be a member of the community and, and uh, uh, join us on future webinars. Let us know what you'd like to uh, to see in future episodes of the webinar program as well, the Maximum Performance Webinar Series. Uh, otherwise, thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you on the next episode. Make it a great week, everybody.